everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. and I'm really glad you're here today. This is part three of the Boxes, Bags, and Book Pages series. And in part one, we made the cover out of the Kleenex box. In part two, we made uh, the signature covers with uh, paper bags and book pages. Today I would like to start working on the embellishments like the uh, the pockets and the flips and things like that. Again, my plan is to use more of the paper bags and book pages and, and things like that. So the first pocket that I want to make is this, uh, this little folded dictionary page pocket where it has two sections where you can put in the, the tags. So what you do is you uh, pull some pages out of a dictionary, and this one I have four all together so that I've got some structure. And you don't have to have just two, pa two pockets, you can have more than that, but I'm going to go ahead and just have two. So I'm going to do it, fold it from the middle, and try to get it somewhat straight. It's not necessary really to worry about it too much. I just try to go along the, the line of text there where I'm folding it. And you'll want to cut or tear a little bit off of the, the front one so that you can fold it down a little bit below the, this one here because it, you, want to you want it to open up below that. So I'm going to do that and then just cut this part off because we won't need that. And because this paper is so fragile, that's why I have so, uh, so many pages of it. And again, obviously this is bigger than I need it to be. So I want it to fit within this little spot right here. So I'm going to mark it with a pencil because I'm going to cut it down with scissors. Now to make this stronger, I could Mod Podge on it and Mod Podge a napkin on it and then sew it. And again, this is just to give it some strength. When I sew it together, it will also give it some strength. I'm also going to take a glue stick and glue these pages together, the back pages, so that um, they stay together. Now I just need to apply some Mod Podge to these uh, folded sections. Okay, then when you're done with that part, this is where you can use eyeshadow if you want or, uh, or ink. But I like to do this before they're glued down because it's a lot easier to do it, to, to ink the edges before you glue them down, especially these folded sections. And as you can see, eyeshadow works a pretty, you know, okay. Um, but I'm going to do some ink since I have some. And again, if you haven't purchased any ink yet and you want to want some advice on what kind of ink to get, I would or what color, I would get um, the Vintage Photo because it seems to be the most versatile. And you can get ink or oxide. It doesn't really, I mean, depending on what you want to do with it, it doesn't really matter. But uh, this is the oxide, and it is the fusion of dye and pigment. And they, it does react with water. So you can get some pretty interesting effects just by uh, spritzing water on it. I do have a video on playing with inks and, and how to have some fun and just make some make some fun backgrounds with ink. Okay, so if you're not going to sew on these, which, you know, that's fine if you don't have a sewing machine, um, what you want to do is just let's glue the backs together and then you're going to glue these edges down, the edges and the bottom. Okay, so now what we have is a pocket here and a pocket here. And if we glue it on just in three spots, we can have a pocket here, you know, along these three edges, and we can have a pocket behind as well for a tag. 
Okay, so for this next pocket, we're going to take a piece of, I'm using music paper, but you can use any kind of double-sided paper, or you can just use regular um, copy-dyed paper, but it's nice to have something that's double-sided. So anyway, it is uh, six and a half by eight and a half, and we're going to kind of fold it like so, so that this bottom fold is pretty straight. And we have two points up at the top and then uh, once you have that then you you can fold it sort of in thirds and you might want to have your uh, your signature cover handy so you can kind of tell how wide you need it to be because you want it to fit on the page there and you can see that mine is a little bit long so all I have to really do is just fold over one little corner on here. So I'm just going to fold, fold this corner in on itself like so. And then as I fold it, I'm going to tuck this one or this edge into this opening right here. And I just try to have this little V kind of in the center. As you can see, I'm not really measuring. I'm just sort of eyeballing it. And it can be adjusted so it's a little bit wide and all I have to do is just um, just tuck it in a little bit better give it another little crease another crease right there and then it fits right on on the page okay so for this pocket we have a pocket here a pocket here a pocket here and a pocket here and if you were to glue it on your page just in three sections you could even have a pocket back here but this paper isn't really necessarily sturdy enough for that um, because you're going to be lifting these up you know every time you put something behind there so that's not something that i would recommend now once you have it all pretty much creased you can take it apart and ink the edges and that gives it enough contrast so that it, it shows up. And I'm just going to take some art glitter glue here, but use whatever glue you have. And I'm just going to put a bead of glue along this bottom edge on the inside so that it stays together as a pocket. Okay, so that's the second pocket that we have done. I'm going to set these aside so I don't lose them. <laughs> You ever lost anything in your craft room? Things disappear. Okay, and then the next one I'm gonna do is gonna be super simple. So I'm gonna use the top of this paper bag in three ways. The first one is in a three by three and a quarter um, pocket. Just something super simple. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and um, glue some dictionary page on here. It doesn't have to necessarily fit perfectly. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to um, tear it so that it will roughly fit inside the edges of the pocket. And for this, I'm just going to use glue stick. I'm just going to ink the edges. And then um, when I'm ready, I will, uh, I might sew around this one too. And then embellish it somehow. Now I have um, some circle punches here to do a thumb hole. If you have a circle punch, it's nice to have a thumb hole. So I like to just center it um, on my mat on one of the little grid lines and then turn it upside down and put a little thumb hole. Now I wanna do a little flip down envelope pocket and I need about five inches in in uh, height and about three and a quarter inches wide. So I hope everybody's having a good day. It's kind of a fun process for me, just kind of hanging out. Um, we've been watching Lost on TV and it's pretty involved, <laughs> pretty interesting. I think we're in season four right now. Okay, so what I want to do here is to make a little envelope. I'm going to fold it up a little bit here and then have this come down and be the flap. Okay, like this. Um, and I want to embellish the inside and the outside. 
with book page. And I thought I would go ahead and embellish the inside or cover it, I guess, uh, with some crossword puzzle. And I just found this at a garage sale. Let's use this one because it has lots of text down here and um, the nice crossword puzzle section there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with, with Mod Podge and then lay it on top lay it on top of the crossword puzzle page like that and then cut away cut away that um, you know anything that's that's excess so that'll be easy now all of these different kinds of pockets that we're making today they can all be made ahead of time you know make a whole bunch of them at once because it's, it's nice to be able to just pull them out of your stash, you know, at least part way made, and then you can embellish them any way you want. Okay, so I want book page here and book page here, and they don't have to be the same book page at all. They could be totally different, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just looking for some good scraps that will fit right there, no problem. I'm just going to kind of tear around the text block. I think I'm going to cut around the text block. This ha paper has, um, it has a grain and it, it tears nice in one direction, but not in the other. And for the little top part right there. Okay. okay, so that part is done, but I don't want to just leave it like this because that's kind of useless. <laughs> Just to have it like that. I want to take some paper and make a little notepad out of this. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, first of all, fold this in half. This is just some old ledger paper that I have. You could use, you know, use uh, notebook paper or whatever. Folding that in half like so. Just cut it to fit. And then you've got a nice little pad of paper. You can even, you know, take the left little leftover and put that on top like so. So you can just create this nice little scrappy little notebook. Like that. And to attach it, I'm just gonna staple it in with my little stapler. which just barely reaches. <laughs> and if you want to, you can take a little scrap piece of fabric and just kind of decorate the top across there, which I think looks kind of nice. So I'm using Fabri-Tac. I'm just going to go across the top like that and then take my little scrap piece of fabric and just lay it across like so and then trim off the ends. And you have this nice little surprise inside. I'm gonna ink the edges. Okay, so when I get ready to put this in, I'm going to attach a button to the front and some string, but I wanna make sure that I have, you know, any embellishments on the front of this before I get ready to finish it off with the button and the string. So we'll hold off on that. The next one is a belly band pocket. So I wanted to take the top of this um, paper bag where it has this, this cutout right here, and I wanna fold it up like that and make a, a belly band pocket out of it. So I'm just gonna mark it to fit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to embellish this a little bit. Probably have to trim out the center and then on the inside as well. And then glue down the sides. When we attach it in the journal, we'll just glue the, the edges down and then you'll be able to slide something down behind that.
and then just some random papers to go inside like Okay, so we have, so far for pockets, we have this uh, regular pocket that will get sewn in, or actually glued in rather. I might sew on it. We have this pocket where we've got um, a pocket here and a pocket here, and potentially a pocket back on that side. And then we have one here, 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 and possibly here. It just kind of depends. So then I also wanted to do notepad. Um, one of them is like a... Um, a matchbook notepad. I need a piece two and a half by seven and a half inches. So how long is this? So I have my two and a half and I have my Ooh, perfect. Okay so this is why it's fun to work with scraps. <laughs> okay so I'm just going to cut this trim it down to seven and a half inches so it's almost there. I just have to trim down just a touch more. Okay that's seven and a half. I'm going to square up one side, one edge, then I'll flip it over and get my other dimension. Okay, so I end up with seven and a half by two, and I'm going to flip up the bottom, and then this will tuck down in there like that. So what I want to do is uh, put obviously some book pages on the inside and the outside, and then put a note a notepad on the inside. So just to make it easy, I'm going to put this on the inside, this dictionary page. And then for this side, I only need to cover the front and this section right here. So since this just about perfectly fits there, that's what I'm going to use. And then I just need something for the front. And I just happen to have some book page right here. Um, uh, rather, some music page. Okay, so for this, I want to um, also do some notepad. So I'm using the same ledger paper, and I am just going to uh, trim it to fit, and I'll put in four pages. Okay, and I'm also going to staple these in. And these need to be trimmed because... I need to staple the, the bottom of this closed. And then again, to, to cover up this little section here, you can use washi tape or a piece of fabric or a ribbon. And since I have fabric right here, it's kind of fun because you can use your pretty much your tiniest scraps. If you're new at this, you're gonna find that you never throw anything away. We'll use this one because it kind of matches the, the rest of the journal, the color, and because it's pretty much the right width. So I'm gonna do what I did before and put some Fabri-Tac over the staples. Let's lay that on where I want it and then trim. And again, these are all going to be, you know, embellished with fussy cut images and stuff like that. Okay, then the next one, using this piece again, um, I'm just going to do a little notebook. Okay, I'm looking for a scrap that's just going to fit right on there, or, you know, close enough. <laughs> and that actually works really well. So I think you're starting to get the idea that really all I'm doing is... Uh, making some different kinds of embellishments to go inside and each one has a you know a different purpose I guess but they're all getting embellished in a similar way uh, with the book page they all serve as backdrops or backgrounds for further embellishment before we actually put them in the journal now we're making each one of these separately 
but it really is so much better um, if you can make a whole bunch of you know one type of thing at a time because then you have a nice stash to draw from so I have this um, this scrap of book page from a field guide which I will use for the inside of this Now we want to put some pages in here as well. So I'll just use this little piece of paper. So I just folded it to fit inside. And then I'll go ahead and just tear it down to fit. It's nice to have a few pages in here, I think. And again, I'm going to use my little stapler. I need my longer stapler. I'm just going to staple it a couple more. If you want to, you can cover the spine with some fabric, which I think looks really cute, and I will do that. But again, totally optional. I just like to cover up the staples if I can. Okay, so we'll set that aside. It's not done, but it is ready to have its next stage worked on. So we'll set that aside to dry. Okay, now I want um, a tall notepad. And for this, I'm going to use um, some ledger paper that I found at a garage sale or thrift store or something. And I'm just going to take uh, one page of it. It needs to be no taller than that, right? I'm going to cut off the... The holes at the top. So I'm just cutting an inch off and then that way I know that it's going to fit inside. And I need it to be three and a half inches wide. So this just provides a little bit of extra writing space and we're just going to staple them at the top. Give a nice little topper on it with some fabric. Just have a little fun with this. So I'm just going to do like a little waterfall. And then when we get ready to put it in, we can ink these edges with some different colors of ink. So what we've done today, so we have this out of music sheet, this pocket where we can put several, several different tags in here. This one is an envelope flip that we'll, we'll finish up in the next video. This is another pocket. I will sew around the edge of this just to give it some structure because I like the way it looks. This one is just going to be a regular pocket, and again, I will sew around it. But all of these, again, will have uh, like fuzzy cut images and stuff like that on there. This one is a belly band with a pocket in the front of it. This will go inside the journal in one of them for um, a little notepad. We have this little notebook um, that will also go inside. And then this little matchbox style notepad. I feel like we accomplished a lot. Um, again, there are just bases that we're, that we're going to be putting inside the journal. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this and are ready to start your next project. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. And don't forget to let the serendipity find you. See you later. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.